Welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to talk about history of Peloton. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. You may now enjoy instructor-led training at home thanks to Peloton, a fantastic brand with a humorous history. Peloton is recognized for producing several noteworthy and cutting-edge sports and fitness items that can help you positively enhance both your body and mind. But how was this remarkable win attained, and who was responsible for this significant achievement? The founder of this business, John Foley, the CEO of Peloton, gave you the ability to create your private gym in your home. Without a doubt, one of the greatest conundrums in the world is the ironic history of the Peloton. Now, let's talk about how, in no more than eight years, this enormous business managed to distinguish itself in the technology and fitness sectors. History 2012. John Foley, a former executive in charge of e-commerce at Barnes & Noble, first realized that his instructor-led workouts were far more satisfying than his self-led gym visits in 2012. The concept for Peloton originated from his desire to find a way to bring exercise courses into the home. In addition to the $400,000 first seed, the remainder of the year was spent assembling some important team members and closing a $3.5 million Series A 2013. Even though it was far from ideal, the prototype bike was created in 2013 and was the subject of their Kickstarter video. It was essential to do this to increase exposure and get more money, namely $307,000. 2014. Peloton acquired $10.5 million in a Series B in April 2014, which they used to make the bike's design consumer ready. After a lengthy production and shipping cycle, Peloton cycles started to arrive in riders' homes and sales of the bikes began slowly but steadily. The Chelsea area of Manhattan's Peloton facility debuted that same year, enabling spin instructors to record their courses. 2015. To increase the number of brick-and-mortar retail stores and speed up the production of bikes, the firm raised $30 million in Series C funding one year later. The next task was to deliver the bikes to houses more quickly and effectively. The Peloton company essentially employed delivery guys to convey the bikes to customers to satisfy the rising demand. The corporation received an additional $75 million at the end of 2015 to grow its software engineering staff. 2016. It was the year that both the modified version of the bike and the live classes debuted. With monthly fees, they provided limitless and on-demand live classes. During the same year, a different fundraising effort raised $325 million. These funds were utilized to expand and improve yoga class workout videos and to boost the likelihood of filming them in additional studio settings. The live classes became more adaptable as a result, and they also became more sophisticated. 2019. The brand was private until 2019. The brand became public on September 26, 2019, and was quickly embraced. The Peloton started trading on NASDAQ after raising $1.6 billion. Additionally, it was the year that Peloton's overall number of items increased to 577,000. Peloton submitted a request for a public offering in August 2019. The business disclosed that it had about 500,000 paying subscribers at that time. Additionally, it claimed that because the business was not publicly traded, it had to endure significant losses from licensing its music for live classes and greater market investments. 2021. The company's first billion-dollar quarter occurred at the beginning of 2021 as a result of heightened demand and necessity for home fitness due to the pandemic and holiday sales. Peloton Foley's founder never wavered in any circumstance. Tens of millions of bikes and treadmills were produced by his company to satisfy the client's huge demand for machinery. Additionally, he never compromised on spending. To maximize delivery to satisfy user needs, about $100 million was spent. 2022. The Peloton Corporation will undergo significant changes in 2022, which is the year after this one. Barry McCarthy, who formerly served as the CFO of Spotify and Netflix, will succeed Foley as the new CEO of Peloton. To restore his clients' happiness, he continually develops fresh, original concepts while also taking their problems and concerns into consideration. Furthermore, a lot of individuals still prefer inexpensively built, high-quality goods and effective treadmills to keep up with their busy schedules and gym training at the same time. So that's it for today. What do you think of our video? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed this video and would like to hear more from us, please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications before you go. Thank you so much for watching us.